This podcast contains explicit language. Bafangu! Houston flight is go. Myla, now let's go. From Assignment X, the SoniaShow.com, and Amalgamated Storytelling, this is the Dorking Out Show, the podcast for people who love stories from movies, TV, books, podcasts, and everywhere else. Welcome to episode 125 of Dorking Out. This is the Black Klansman edition. My name is Sonia Mansfield, and joining me today is my co-host. He's back. Maybe Christopher Allen Smith. <laughs> so you know, you know, you have that friend that's on the verge of divorce. Oh, and this is and interesting. Like this has taken an like interesting turn. Like their spouse goes out of town, but their spouse is coming back, and you go, "Hey, you know, blah 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 is coming back. How do you feel?" And a happy marriage would be like, "Oh, I feel great. I really missed him." But an unhappy marriage is like. Yeah, he's coming back, and uh, or or she's coming back, and yeah, uh, you know, oh yeah, I'll be glad to have him back. There's that tone in yeah. their voice, like, like the opposite of what it should be. It's like you can tell there's trouble in paradise because they're they're sad when they should be happy, and they're happy when they should be sad. He's leaving town. He's gonna be gone for a week. Okay, now they... you're just making fun of me, right? Now, no, now. Uh, well, no, there was that tone in the voice of you. Here's here's uh, my co-host. He's uh, he's back on the show. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh. I thought I thought that's where you were going, but then when you mentioned the part about the spouse going out of town for a week, I thought you were making fun of me because my husband, my spouse, is going out of town this week, and when I've been uh, talking about it, I was like. My husband's going to be out of town this week, and my kid is going to be gone, and I'm going to watch all the TV. And I've been talking about it like, I'm going to watch this, and I'm going to watch this, and I'm going to watch this. And I thought you were suggesting that there's trouble in paradise here. That is not true. No, no. There's only trouble in paradise between me and you. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) And it's funny because I am actually speaking to you from a very troubled paradise right now. Uh Oh, paradise dear. being Paradise, California, which yes. is on fire. Uh, in the middle of three fires. Yes. And there's actually soot. I've no- been noticing this. There's soot on the ground that's kind of fallen like snow a little bit. Like there's little oh. soot drifts just a little bit. But it's just like, it, you, you know what it is? I love is... that you invited me to come up and visit you, too. Clearly, that's you don't right. care about my health or safety. That's right. Um, but... Uh, you know, you know, there's the little cigarette ash that comes off, and you know, if 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 you go like outside a door of a, you know, like a bar or something, and you look on the ground and like where all the smokers come out yeah. and flick the ash, it, it it's as though there are smokers smoking in every square foot of Chico and Paradise, and basically the entire North State is just there's ash on the ground it's kind of crazy it's so terrible if only we weren't diverting all that water to the ocean (laughs) jesus christ (laughs) i don't even want to get into that but yeah um well fucking liar anyway usually i would usually i would love to give you all kinds of shit for your poor choice in husbands yes but Today, I'm going to give you – I'm going to tell a legendary story of your boyfriend, your Ex- ex-boyfriend. Yes. But first. And, but yeah, but, but first. But yeah, so I'm going to get into that. So I, I – I, I, this is proof of my friendship. Rather than relentlessly and justifiably bash your husband, <laughs> I'm going to rel- relentlessly and justifiably bash your ex David. <laughs> David is a goddamn saint. And you know it. He would have to be. That's, I mean, it's true. He does have to be. I'm the worst. God, what did he do in a past life to deserve this? I know. It must have been really bad. And that, and then, and then Joseph Goebbels was reincarnated as <laughs> David, whatever the hell his name is. <laughs> What's his face? Uh, David. 
What's so his face? There was some interesting let's change the subject. There was some interesting news out of the the Academy this week about how they're retooling the Oscars and we have done many a podcast about how the Oscars needs to revamp and this week they decided they're gonna add a popular film category Ugh. because yeah. making all the money isn't award enough. They need a different award. They want to turn it into the People's Choice Award. And then they want to give like awards for sound and art direction or whatever during commercial breaks. To yeah. shit to shit all over their hard work. Uh what do you think? about the Oscar changes. Before I we get think, into Black Klansmen, let's talk about this. I think that this needs to be filed under the dorking out uh head uh section title of you didn't listen to me at all. <laughs> that we was talked about I think it. that was one of our segments that we were going to do originally. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> this is I applaud the Academy for trying to figure out something to do. I don't like the fact that this was purely that they are essentially reorienting the awards around a telecast. Yes. I think they should actually try to give Oscars for real artistic achievement and then figure out how to communicate yeah. that on a TV show. They, and, and They expanded the categories for this very reason, in theory, to add yeah. movies that are different. But instead, right. they just nominate more of the same. Exactly. That's, so the fix isn't add more categories. The fix is expand your fucking horizons, voters. I, yeah, I'm well, a little, that's the thing. Oh, keep going. Sorry. I was just going to say, I am i can't help but wonder, is this award like a move of holy shit? Black Panther made so much fucking money and we're not going to nominate it for anything. Uh, let's let's well, do a popular movie category. <laughs> it it will be interesting cuz well a couple things. Black Panther I think will get nominated because of the up to 10 nominations. There's no way in the world it's going to win. Right. The, you know, the Academy cannot recognize anything beyond small dramas at this point it's gotten itself <laughs> so constricted in the way that it thinks of artistic achievement and the puckered view of m artistic movie making right. that it, it just can't see it, it doesn't see comedies it doesn't see science fiction movies well, it doesn't see horror they... movies it it doesn't see a lot of dramas. Well, last year, they yeah. had Get Out was nominated for stuff. That was a big deal. This is a genre yeah. movie. This is a horror movie. And that it made the cut. It's yeah. like, you're you're already on the right track, Oscars. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't need this. Yeah. Well, uh, and, and A I friend of mine said that this category should just be called, We Want to Give Marvel an Oscar. <laughs> well, that's the thing. is what, what irritates me is the Academy, and this is, this is where I'll... Well, you know, where I'll stand up for Marvel in an artistic way is the Academy already has a, their special achievement awards. They right. gave it to uh, well, they gave it to Disney when they made Snow White because yes. they made the first feature length animated film. They've they've given it to I think they gave it to Star Wars because of achievement in special yeah. effects or something where you do something that might that might actually fit into an existing category but what you've achieved is something that happens you know maybe once a decade or something yes. or once every two decades so they give you something to say hey we we don't really have a we want to make sure that this thing that you did that we, we all noticed was amazing gets recognized yes and sometimes the academy does give kind of half lifetime achievement half yes. uh real achievement like giving peter jackson and the lord of the rings crew all well, like their when Oscars paul newman the won movie. for color of money or al pacino yeah. won for scent of a woman like those aren't their yeah. best performances really 
Yeah. <clears throat> They're more like Lifetime Achievement Oscars. Yeah. So I would definitely, especially this year, actually, actually, probably, actually, probably 2020 is what I give it. What Marvel has done with everything from the first Iron Man movie to the last, you know, Avengers 4, which really is, you know, by all indications, is supposed to really start and finish this huge 21 movie, 22 movie uh series you know 22 movie story i mean yeah they should i think they should get something they have changed the game they've changed movies they've take they've they've taken the whole blockbuster what? chasing mentality that studios are go for and they've actually used it to some artistic uh effect you know and I think that they should get dumb. You know, well, I think you're right in that a special yeah. achievement Oscar is probably more the way to go than adding an additional category for, and calling it popular film. That's the part that I was like, well, what does that mean? Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, you know what movie is really popular is that Mr. Rogers documentary, but it hasn't yeah. made as much money as say, I don't know. I'm trying to think of <laughs> Well, yeah, <laughs> it hasn't made as much money as, say, Rampage. I don't know. Right. I don't know how yeah, much money no, yeah. Rampage has made. So you're probably right. So what's more popular? Like, right. Well, is it Mr. Rogers that everybody super loves, but is made not as much money? Or is it Rampage, which has made a shit ton yeah. of money? Well, actually, I don't. What? Once again, don't know if Rampage has made a lot of money. Here's, I'm just... here's the thing. Here, here's the thing that. Y I see. I see where you're going, and, and or you solo. are being point. Solo is a good example. Okay, but yeah, let's look at this. Um, popular usually equates to how many people have seen it. How? What's the population of the people that have paid attention to it, and what? And what does that population think? If you and this is the problem with this popular category, is if you want to go by what's popular. Rampage will should beat out Mr. Rogers every right. time. Why? Because the number of people that have seen Rampage, I'm sure, outstrips by a factor of 20 the people who have watched Mr. Rogers. However, if you were to talk to the people that had seen Rampage and ask them how much they loved it. Exactly. The that's what I'm that, talking about. Well, yeah, but that's what I mean. It's the people so, – so the people that love it – if there are a small amount of people and they've found something that is really artistically great, but it's a small amount of people, that is worth artistic recognition, but it is not popular. It's a, that actually kind of falls into the more traditional or what in the last 10 years, let's say, has become the more the way the you know, like the best picture category right. winners. So so that the, and this is a long way of me saying, God as usual. All the yeah, God knows what all the different <laughs> factors are. You know, are are you going to go by box office? Are you going to go by uh, some sort of Rotten Tomatoes critical score? Are you going to go by ticket sales? Are you going to go by you know? And then, right. if you go by any of those factors, that automatically ghettoizes kind of artistic movies. It makes the problem that they're trying to solve worse, which is 15 years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, you know, you had Forrest Gump win. You had Titanic win. You had Gladiator win. You had you had these big, huge movies get at least nominated or right. recognized in some way. And if, if you have this category now that, you know, I think a lot of the – self-important hoity-toity academy voters in hollywood are going to think well they got the popular thing now now essentially the the best picture category is going to get even more right. ridiculous and solar and small yes. and you know chamber well, and... dramas and it's going to be really ridiculous it's going to make the be best picture category look laughable at this point right well then I don't want to, like, dominate the whole show with Oscar talk, but also yeah. I feel like popular film category and then having 
Academy voters vote on that? It's like, right. is it popular with Academy voters then? Because it, yeah, and, and, exactly. but then if you open it up, it's essentially like a People's Choice Award. So, right. you know, as I yeah. posted on Twitter, now like, well, what movie's going to win the popular vote? And then Best Picture is now the Electoral College. Or something, yeah. Like that's the thing is, is the popular by definition, the best picture is the popular vote, right? In the academy, I, that's the whole thing. If they want, that's how they do it. If they want to add some new categories that would maybe bring in like some fresh blood and maybe people would be interested in, they could add like, you know, voiceover or motion capture, motion capture. Yeah. I mean that's yeah, Andy Circus that in the War for the Planet of the Apes is legit yeah. amazing. Yeah. They and yeah, they they need to start recognizing that kind that's, of act. That's that's the kind of change I would like to see. Like just and they and they have historically done stuff like that over the years. Like they would you know, they added like sound or for a while it was like black and white and color and you know things like that they've 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 added new categories over the years so right. it's not so weird to me that they would add new categories it's just i don't think this is the right category but i am not a member of the academy yeah yet. so but having said all that let's talk about something more important yes this week Spike Lee's The Black Klansman comes out, which logically brings us to your dating life. <laughs> now, let, let's see. All right, all right. Can we? Yeah, go ahead. I'm going to let you tell your story first, and then I'm going to introduce the movie and we'll talk about the movie. So, go ahead and tell your story. So, so here's what happened Sonia and I went to journalism school in the for, for the award-winning journalism program of chico state california don't laugh it's more i was just gonna school. say you're making it sound like that's not true it's it's true no it's the legit. journalism the, the journalism program at chico state is uh, fantastic yeah it, it is, is award-winning uh yeah it, it 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 began the it was one uh, of the first tradition. online school newspapers ever that's right. We yeah. Actually, you know what? Oh my God, Sonia, I forgot about this. My head was on the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences first website. I don't know if I forgot about this. Let's actually let's combine all of this. Okay. So back in ninety four, ninety five. A lot of companies and institutions were first starting to get on the web, and it's just like, holy crap, we got we to gotta get something called a website. And nobody had done any kind of work like this. And uh, Phil, I think, I think he was a photographer on the Orion staff, uh -huh. or he was like the technical guy on the Orion staff. I really liked him. I feel bad because I'm forgetting his last name um, and his position. But – Anyway, he, he was the guy that had a lot to do with uh, putting the Orion online and getting our first website going, and he got a gig making the website for the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. And he needed a picture or an image or something of the old-fashioned uh, like press hat with the press card in it. <laughs> And I, being the fashion maven that I was in 1994, wore – I was mm -hmm. the fedora guy. I was the f guy that wore the fedora in high school and college. Yes. And she took a picture of my head with a little press card in it and put it on the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. And I told me. don't even remember I, this. How I, do I, I not remember it. this? I don't believe it. Because, it. because it was just something he said in passing one day, and I was like, wow, that's cool. And then I'm not even sure I ever actually saw it. Uh, but, uh, he told me that it happened and, uh, yeah. So anyway, point is that might seem like a distraction and it is point is back when Sonia and I were both working on the Orion, we were roommates and Sonia was dating Mr. X. Let's, we will call him Otto. <laughs> if you want to, because he likes up, to get um, blotto. 
That's right. <laughs> if it conjures up certain images of uh, a Simpsons character, that's probably kind of close, but not. Not but quite. But also kind of not close. Not quite. Not quite close. But anyway, there was this guy named Otto that Sonia was dating, and I was just not a fan of this guy. I think Sonia knows this. Yeah. And, but he would hang around. And I would try to be nice and whatever. Well, one day. I I admit, and this was back when I was really into movies, even a lot more than I am now. I was seeing all the you know independent movies. Well, and I movies. was working at the movie theater, so we were seeing everything for free. Yeah, so we were seeing everything, and I that was back. In, so this was like ninety four, ninety five, ninety four, ninety five, and this was back when Spike Lee was like, he was like near the top. He had made Malcolm X. He right. made do the right thing. He had, he was really I think he, he was, was really up there. He was doing like a tour of colleges and I think he was either right. talking about Crooklyn or Clockers. I can't remember and I think it's Clockers. Maybe. I don't know. Well, remember. I mean not talking about Clockers exactly, but like it was part of that kind of uh promotional push. Right. And the thing is I had, you know, I, back then I read Premier Magazine and all the stuff, like all the old school ways yeah. of getting, you know, future looking movie news. And he had been, th I, I jokingly say threatening, but he had been talking about making a Jackie Robinson movie. Yes. And I was super excited. I think that was also around the time Ken Burns' uh, baseball documentary came out. And it talked a lot about uh, uh, Jackie Robinson going to the Dodgers and all that stuff. And I was super excited to have, you know, the great thing about, we'll get into this. The great thing about Spike Lee is he, sometimes it's, sometimes less is more and sometimes more is more. Yes. And he is not a subtle director. And <laughs> he's also not afraid, you know, when he's putting images of Rodney King getting beat up into the end of his Malcolm X movie, it's like this guy is going for it, and mm -hmm. he's leaving. He's he's when he goes big, he really goes big. Yes, and, and I'm gonna have a lot. We're gonna have some thoughts right. on that when we really right. get and into he, Black Klansman. He doesn't have a lot of, I wouldn't say trust, but he he. I don't think he sees a lot of value in. I'm gonna put the pieces there and let the audience put them together. No. Yeah. He's going to jam those pieces together right yes. in front of you. And sometimes it's fantastic and sometimes it's insufferable. But um, so I was very excited to see him take on Jackie Robinson. Yes. And I heard that your boyfriend, Otto, was going to this press conference. Yes. And he was going to be able and he was talking about, oh, I'm going to I think it was a way of humble bragging, to be honest. Oh, yeah. he's, uh, I, I get to ask a question of Spike Lee. What should I ask him? And what I said was, <laughs> I think what you should ask him is why is – oh, this was also at the time where uh, Spike Lee was making Taco Bell commercials. Yes. And I, and I think we saw one of these Taco Bell commercials while we were both watching TV in the middle of the day. I think we were watching whatever reruns on Comedy Central, and I was waiting him f to get the fuck out of the apartment so I could relax a little bit. Anyway <laughs> – so little did I know he was just, just this loungy son of a bitch that was always going to be lazing around anyway. But anyway. <sighs> it's uh, true. So I saw this commercial and I said, hey, I got a question for – and I jokingly said this. Yeah, I got a question for you to ask Spike Lee. Ask him why he's spending all these time doing these goddamn Taco Bell commercials when he should be working on Jackie Robinson. <laughs> ask him that. <laughs> And I was kind of joking, but I was also kind of like, yeah, I, you know, there's no internet. There's no nothing. Yeah. I want to know. And if you can ask him what the status is, I was hoping that your boyfriend would go ask him and, and, and Spike Lee would say, oh, yeah, you know, I, uh, I have, uh, yeah, we're working on it. It's going to come out in two years or something. Right. I, don't know. I, was, I was hoping for it. Okay. Cut no, to but the, and I should say this, this old boyfriend, he was kind of a, a shit disturber. Like he liked yes, to well, like he liked to poke people with a stick, like he liked yeah. to rile up the bear. Like he, yes, yeah, he was kind of a pain in the ass that way. And he actually, is he took he took reasons. your question a little step further. 
Oh, he did. Well, here's the thing. And he also kind of taught me. I think sometimes on this show, I seem a little more con- or I seem a, maybe a lot more conservative than I actually am because there are certain kinds of liberals. Well, certain kinds of conservatives, obviously, but I'm here. I'm talking about liberals that they like to fashion themselves as I am talking truth to power. I am pushing back against the man. I am putting whatever. But really what they most like to do is they're not even real liberals. What they are is they're kind of opportunists that kind of bring on the cloak sure. of liberalism. And they're, they're, they're the nice, sensitive guys in colleges that talk about the important issues because they really feel it. That kind of guy. Uh, um, he was – I called him – he was a wussy poetry boy. That's right. That's right, which is – there's nothing wrong with Which he then poetry. turned into like, like an anthem, you know. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with poetry, even though it's boring. There's nothing wrong with being uh, wussy, wussy, right? Even the you know, but he, he's the kind of guy that would, you know what it is? He's the kind of guy that goes to the quad and starts playing his guitar yes. in the hopes that women will come over. Oh, you can play oh, yeah. the guitar, or he, uh, or as a thirty-five-year-old man, he's the guy with the puppy at the dog park. Yes, that's what he is. Anyway. So, so I make this. Let's hurry up and, and wrap asking, the. Let's wrap up this story. Yeah. We're almost a half hour in. We haven't talked about Black yeah. Klansman. <laughs> okay, but I want to ask you. What I want to ask you is, what yes. was so? That's my memory up until the in, up until the infamous incident. Yes. What do you remember about this? What was your perspective on all of this? What I remember is him uh, calling me uh-huh. and saying like. Uh, I did something and I was like okay <laughs> what did you do and it instead of taking your legit good question he tied it to something uh, so he <laughs> we should just say what he asked he goes to this press conference and it's right. I don't know if it's a press conference it was more like a talk but People could ask questions yeah, I think or whatever. It was a, I think it was a. I think it was an actual press conference. I think with you know what you're right because there was a lot of local thing. media there. That's why this turned into a thing. So and it was, this, and it was, it was like in a smallish room. Oh, yeah. I, I forgot about this. Uh, let me add this. Spike Lee somehow had also hurt his leg, so he's at the. Imagine him at like the front of this smallish classroom, literally on crutches. Right talking to the local media one of which was the orion and what yes. did he do so let's remember because it was a while ago smith's question was hey instead of doing taco bell commercials i would love to see that jackie robinson biopic you've been talking about let's go Wait, let's do that. that spike this ex-boyfriend's question was considering the number of African Americans that suffer from heart disease, how can you justify doing Taco Bell commercials? That's right. Which then Spike Lee lit him on fire. Was like, how dare you know, how can you ask me that question? Why don't you ask the Rolling Stones how they could do ads for Pepsi when exactly. you know everyone has diabetes? You know, he lit him on fire and he did it in front of all the local press. So then it's everywhere. Which included all the local TV stations. Yes. So it's all over the TV. He, right. this boyfriend, this ex boyfriend, couldn't walk across the campus without people being like, there's the asshole who <laughs> like accosted Spike Lee. And then I believe Spike Lee went on to do like other press conferences and talk about that question. Oh, God. I got to go back and look at that. I didn't. I didn't know he was so vilified. Actually, on campus, I wish I had yeah. gotten out of. I, I wish I had stopped playing Civ for ten minutes. Civilization, <laughs> two for ten minutes, because that yeah. Civilization two is a fantastic game. Yeah, anyway, it, I was I real, it was a real. It was a real cluster. So it was, uh, not a smart decision. <laughs> to ask. Right. Because and by the way, your questions are really. That's a good question. But it but is like, admittedly, it is a little bit of a thing. And what's funny is like his question now, like, like yeah. 
these are the kind of questions that sometimes we ask celebrities. Like, how can you do blank when blank? Like, we do that. But, like, he was asking a question of an African-American man that nobody was asking, like, his white counterpart. Right. Nobody so was it saying, smacked hey. of, it was it smacked of racism and this old boyfriend he's not racist you know but the question was uh not well received <laughs> and and that's the thing nobody's talking to Ridley Scott about why are you doing Budweiser ads or whatever nobody's right. talking to Michael Bay yes. about no one's talking to any of these other directors yes the, no, no one was talking to right. David Fincher about the millions of you know commercials he was doing at yes. the time actually I think he had just done Alien 3 so probably nobody was talking to him about much of anything <laughs> point is <laughs> this is before 7 Point is, goddamn world, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, but yes. So it was kind of like I'm going to be this crusading liberal, blah blah blah. And yeah. I'm really going to show. I, I think he thought. Blah, I think he blah. thought I gotcha. I gotcha, Spike I Lee. Like, and boy, he really didn't. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just like, <laughs> give me a. Oh my God, give me a break. And and you know what the worst part about, about it was, Sonia, that I kept having this... sex with him. Ugh. God, no. I, I <laughs> well, that probably yeah. Be, I, I I don't I, think I it was much longer that, after that. Actually, we broke up. But anyway, more importantly, what I was going to say is the, the worst part of it happened to me. Yes, you. Which is I never got an answer. I I never you got never an got an answer, answer to your question. The real victim here <laughs> is Smith. The real victim was me because I never found out what the status of his Jackie Robinson movie was, which I'm still waiting for. Which brings us to The Black Clansman. Yes. So, directed by Spike Lee and starring John David Washington, that is Denzel's son, Adam Driver, Lori Harrier, Michael Buscemi, and Topher Grace as David Duke. This is based on the true story of Ron Stallworth, the first African-American police officer in Colorado Springs in the late 70s. Actually, it was probably early 70s. In the 70s, let's say that. Somewhere. Who infiltrated the Ku Klux Klan. Okay. Um, I'm just going to say right off the bat, I think this movie is, um, furious and funny and probably the most accessible Spike Lee movie in years. I really like this movie. Uh, Smith, you're a big Spike Lee fan. I want to hear what you think. Um, Spike Lee, and I am not the first or even the tenth person to say this, especially having to do with the Black Klansman, he is all over the place in his quality. Yes. He's all over the place in what he delivers. The thing I love about Spike Lee from Do the Right Thing, I was not a big fan. I don't even really remember. She's got to have it, his first real movie. Yes. Uh, but Do the Right Thing was just like one of the best, most engaging blow out your you know yeah. the back of your head movie experiences i've ever had it was fantastic malcolm x there are moments in malcolm x where i actually do we were talking last week about the thrill of a hero doing something cool and having the music playing along with yeah. him there are moments of malcolm x where malcolm x is denzel washington the malcolm x is controlling his troops and kind of standing up for himself that yes. it's just so fun and the music is playing and it's just like oh i love this this movie is is all over the place some of it is almost eye-rollingly spike lee doing his spike lee tricks or his spike his spike lee isms like One like which them. ones well, like, there's a couple. There's one of which is where, for some reason, he puts – essentially what he does is he puts people on a plank. He puts the camera on the plank, and then he rolls the plank so the people are moving with the camera, yeah. like, down a hall or down a street, but they're not walking. They're kind of – it looks yeah, like they're kind of walking. It, it gives it this weird, like, dreamlike – Yeah, yeah. Um, and... It makes you feel off. Yeah, which, which, I is, like, which is but... fine, but I don't – sometimes I don't understand really why he's using it, and it seems – and I think he's I think he's done it since she's got to have it. 
so sometimes it's just like, what are you doing? I know this is your trick. It's like kind of the, the Sam Raimi snake cam thing that he does in Evil <laughs> right. Dead. And some, so, you know, by the time you see it. I, 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 uh, I like that move. So yeah. I'm, I'm cool with it. I get it, but 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 th- but this also begins with uh, Alec Baldwin yes. kind of giving this kind of this speech, a, a, a distilled version of the speech every Southern governor gave from like 1950 yes. to 1968 about how we're not, you know, we're against miscegenation, we're against. Uh, uh, race mixing or against integration and it's going to destroy our southern I life. actually I Just thought this. that scene was really interesting. I don't think it's a coincidence that he cast Alec Baldwin who's so famous right now for playing Donald Trump on SNL. Right. To, to yeah. give that, that speech. And that that is one of the things where it's like there is nothing subtle going on in this movie. Yeah. Which I like but especially like with the with the Alec Baldwin thing at the beginning it's it's shot in this way that it's half of it is meant to seem like this 19 like outtakes from a 1958 racist you know you know clan movie or something like a like a almost like a promo or an informational movie that the clan would be making right but it's like outtakes so it's kind of like kind of funny cuz he can't quite remember his line yes. sometimes but it's also not really funny cuz it's awful but then it's all. But it, then it's got this weird. I think Spike Lee really was affected by uh, JFK and the way that uh, Oliver Stone was using all these different filmmaking techniques yes. and all these different film stocks and going in all these different directions and then putting them all together in this kind of faz- phantasmagoric fever dream like way. So the movie begins like that. That it's kind of like, where is this going? What is this doing? Like I get it but it's it's like a little bit too much then the movie gets to actually um ron stallworth uh john washington's character and him and then it's 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 weird because it's this very avant-garde beginning and then the movie goes for about an hour and 20 minutes of pretty conventional period piece filmmaking where we see him go on to the police force, we see him, you know, go undercover at a black power rally, we see him kind of working his way up, you know, ha- having run-ins with fellow cops that are racist and then some that are not. That's interesting. You think it, it's like more conventional and I didn't think it was conventional at all. Okay, well, yeah, let me let me hear what you're thinking. Like wh- how do how do you see that? I feel like cuz there is like a good chunk of this movie is about like under being undercover Mm -hmm. and i think most of these stories are the cop gets in too deep you know or he starts to sympathize with the people that are criminals you know things like that and i don't think this movie ever does that right and yeah oh i agree with that which which i think is good obviously and i i did think it was interesting that the Klansman that he's undercover with, that and I should say Adam Driver's character is. Yeah, right. actually, so wanna, so I Ron Stallworth ex- like should... makes a call, like he answers an ad in a newspaper, and he decide like, you know, puts on his white voice, which is uh, I haven't right. seen Sorry to Bother You yet, but also is dealing with the same thing, which I think is very interesting. Right. So he puts on his white voice and like basically gets himself like recruited by the clan and obviously he can't go to these meetings so his fellow his fellow detective adam driver goes in his place and they like work together to infiltrate the clan and uh you know prevent like cross burnings and uh and other activities i don't want to spoil things um well so i like that you know, so Adam Driver's character, Flip, goes undercover, and these Klansmen, they're awful. They're they are racist. They're disgusting. But they're not all mouth-breathing idiots, which I, one of them is. Yeah. <laughs> one of them is literally a mouth-breathing idiot. But one of them is actually kind of clever. Like, he's still an awful racist bigot. 
but right. he's not super stupid, which I thought was kind of surprising, I guess, in this movie. Right. Um, and I do think you're right. There's a lot in this movie that feels like it's super on the nose. Right. Like right. there's the whole like America first. And, you know, they talk about like David Duke would never be president, you know. Right. It's super, yeah. you know, like when you say like Spike Lee is not subtle, he's he's very obvious. And this movie has those things. But I think the movie earns it because it's this is what it's talking about. You know, agree, if, 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 if it was yeah. a different movie, if it was like not about what it's about, if it was just about like drug dealers and about like being undercover in a drug den or whatever, then it would be feel weird but like for this it doesn't right. feel weird and i just saw this movie last night and i haven't really read a lot about it or anything so i'm sorry i've got like a stream of consciousness thing going here but one of the things i was thinking about last night after i saw it was um i kept thinking of american crime story the people versus oj and how mm -hmm. we have a lot of movies and tv shows that look back at like past events um through like a modern sensibility so like knowing what we know now you know look how shitty we treated marcia clark or you know things like that yeah. and i like that this movie is kind of showing us the past to shed light on what's happening happening now right which i think is really interesting and and it, like you said, it is very on the nose and it is very obvious, yeah. but I think we, we need it. Well, yeah. And I agree. And, and I guess what I was going to say is it, it's a, it's an interesting movie, a little strange or a little, a little clunky in its transitions. Cause the beginning is a very, this kind of very avant-garde thing. And the middle is told from a filmmaking point of view, I guess is what I should say. Yeah. From a kind of conventional way. It's we're sure. here with the okay. with this with this character on his first day of work as he's going into this new environment and he's trying out these new things. And the, but the thing that I like about it and where Spike is I don't want to say subtle, but his best kind of big Hollywood filmmaking is coming through in that so Ron Stallworth is this young African, the first African-American cop in the uh, Colorado Springs police force. He's really young. He's eager. He's really want, he's really a go-getter. <clears throat> so he's trying to do all this stuff. And what, what's great is the, most of the officers around him, they seem like they almost might like from a stereotypical Spike Lee perspective or what people think of as of Spike Lee from a stereotypical perspective, they would think, "Oh, all all the cops are going to be mean, racist assholes." Right. Well, they're not. They're usually they're kind of gruff dicks, and what you think of is they're treating him differently because he's black. Is there a lot of them are treating him this way because he's new, and one of the funniest, one of the funniest scenes I've seen in a long time is when he actually. First day in like the the intelligence squad or whatever, where he's going to work with other police officers on essentially what you do is you go out into the community and try to find the troublemakers and figure out if they're what real trouble they're going to make. And, you know, he goes to a uh, Stogie Carmichael speech and there he meets his love interest. But then he goes, you know, but his on, on his first day in the squad, he sees this ad for the KKK. And he calls up and he basically pretends to be a white guy. And as he's going on, it's <laughs> weirdly funny. And and then he starts doing all this. I hate N words. I hate this. I hate yeah. that. He just, and all it, of the it reminds me of do the right thing where like, they just start listing like all the awful racist terms. Right. Yeah, exactly. And, and what's funny is all of the cops that are kind of ignoring him in this bullpen, start to turn around and like what the fuck is going on here yes. <laughs> it's like it's 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 not like it's kind of like when you see something happen at work it's like i'm gonna i'm gonna put down what i'm doing and i'm gonna watch this show 
Yes. This is this doesn't happen every day at work. I'm just going to sit here, drink my coffee and see what happens. And so they're so he's doing this thing and you would expect and you know Adam Driver does probably the funniest turnaround. Yes. In the last 20 years. Um so he gets off the phone and you think, "Oh, he's he's started this thing with the clan and he's doing this and he's so smart." And you expect Adam Driver to start kind of giving him shit, you know, oh, who do you think you are, whatever, but he, but instead he goes, did you use your real name? <laughs> I love that part. And then, and then Ron re- Stallworth, you know, because he, because he, he's made out to be this kind of, you know, pretty hip, pretty smart, pretty with it young guy. It's like, oh yeah, he is a rookie and here it, here's his first rookie mistake. Right. And then it was like, oh shit. And he realizes it, and and then they, as a police force, they kind of come together to try to figure out how to fix it and also how to continue on with this investigation. And it's just – it is really funny. And watching um, Adam Driver and John Washington work together as a team, you know, there's – they never get into this kind of – what I think you would see in a lesser movie, yes. this kind of shout, shouting match about race, and they're never going at it. They're these, they're two cop coworkers, yes, that are really trying to solve a problem. And every time you think, oh, you know, the cops are not, you know, uh, you, there, you know, there are moments where you think Adam Driver is not doing what he's supposed to be doing because he, maybe he's a racist or maybe he's whatever. But it's kind of like he. He is not sure about putting his life on the line. Yes. I think he, what he said was to stop guys from burning a couple of pieces of wood. Right. And it's it's a it's kind of a clumsy way to say it, but it's kind of like he you know, as you, as we go through this, we realize some of these people are uh dangerous and smart, but most of them are foolish dupe, you know, right. dupes that are never going to accomplish anything and I don't want to put my life on the line. Yeah. To hang out with these losers. But, you know, but then the question is at at what point how far do you go to watch the smart guys that are trying to really cause trouble and, you know, ignore the doofuses? Right. And it's just it's really it's really good. And and what's what's funny is uh well, not funny, but what's interesting is this whole stuff comes up about, you know, make America great again, and they talk about this. Yeah. But but that was actually a thing in America in the 70s, which is, oh, my God, we've passed our prime. The You know, we beat the Nazis. What? We landed on the moon, and now yeah. we're in the middle of the shit. And then Reagan came along, and, you know, this is one of the ways Trump has destroyed the Republican Party. Yes. Make America one great again. Many, one of the many ways. <laughs> yeah. Make America great again was Reagan's yeah. tagline. And what what he meant at the time was we're going to get out of Watergate. We're going to get out of this Vietnam yes. funk. We're going to kind of get our head back on our shoulders. Yes. And, but it was adopted know, by the Klan as right. make America white again, basically. Exactly. And then it, and, and then it was and then, adopted well, by and Trump. And I think America first was like a Klan, like a Klan thing, right? To well, say America it first. Was, it was actually <laughs> this is this is no, this is what's so fucking crazy about Trump. It was literally an American Nazi Party thing. That was gotcha. what the American Nazi okay. Party party in the thirties with Lindbergh at its head. What they were trying to do is argue, let's stay out of World War II. This is before Pearl Harbor. Let's stay out of World War II. Let's put America first and let yeah. Europe fight its own fight because we already you know we already played this you know they already fooled us once with world war one let's not send our boys over to get killed you know there was a lot of understandable sentiment about not wanting to get involved in another european war Mm -hmm. but it was it was you know but that whole flag was raised and i think it was i think it was actually called the america first movement um, yeah, so that was all literally from the Nazi party. So yeah, this whole thing of Trump saying, you know, he takes make America great again, destroys that. Then he literally takes a tagline from the American yeah. Nazi party. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know. Yeah. Some people want to pretend that he's not a horrible racist. He's a horrible racist. And stuff yeah. like that is super obvious. And there's, 
it's in the movie does two things too it has these these clansmen and they're like we're gonna burn crosses and you know they're awful awful racists but then it also has topher grace as david duke and like he's kind of like the like almost like the new face of the clan right and yeah he actually and he talks about kind of racism almost like doing not being so obvious not just burning crosses but doing it through like immigration reform and health care and you know uh gerrymandering and so much of what we right. see now basically yeah and and i, I th- and i think, I think that topher some... grace is okay, actually cool. really great in this role <laughs> and i actually really like topher grace i think I, I was a big fan of the 70s show when he was on it at that 70s show. And I, I think he's really great in this is playing like David Duke is kind of a, he's kind of a dork. Right. Like a racist yeah. dork. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and I think, I think that is, I think one of the ways that this movie is unsubtle is it, it does take some threads that were there in the seventies and highlights them but then it does kind of put some anachronisms from trump and injects them into that yeah some of the stuff that i don't think was really going on back then but fits in enough so it makes sense and it's nothing that i think is so egregious that you know it kind of breaks the believability of you know the suspension of disbelief and the believability of a fictionalized true story um and that's one of the things that i like about this movie and that i like about spike lee that that has always kind of irritated me about kind of this actually ties in a little bit with our academy things is i think a lot of academy a lot of film creators and just you know novelists and all that kind of stuff they seem to have this kind of less is more Let's be subtle. If we have a choice between going big and in your face and going subtle, they always choose to go subtle. And it's almost this genteel kind of, I don't know, uh, like they don't want to be too gauche or too whatever. Right. And a, a lot of times I like that, but sometimes I think it really does downplay when when something crazy is going on and you downplay it, you're kind of suppressing the real impact of the thing that's going on. And what I mean by that is, and where it comes in here is, there is, so so the beginning talks about, you know, the 1950s racism, then there's this 1970s section of this investigation, then it jumps up forward to um, kind of news footage of Charlotte last year and Trump yeah. and this and that. And you can see the threads go right from the Klan in the 70s right into Charlottesville. Yes. And then you see Trump, you know, kind of uh, defending it. So it, it makes very vivid, very clear, <laughs> very easy to pick up, the, you know, how these threads do connect yes. together. And, and, and it does strip away all of the well he didn't really mean it like that well he doesn't really mean it like this what he means is you know it it makes obvious all it makes yeah. hearable all the dog whistles that trump is constantly yes blowing on and it takes a director like spike lee to really hit that and i think a more subtle more gentlemanly or you want to put it more polite yeah, more subtle direct yeah 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 thank you a more polite director would not make these choices and what they would do is end up making a less effective yes. less real movie because when the president of the united states and people around him really are defending literal clansmen yes that is not a moment for polite downplaying. Yeah, there's a kind of there's a kind of passive stupidity. Yes, that I think a certain class of news commentators or political commentators do when they 
don't want to put their finger you know they don't want to say what's obvious in obvious terms they are so there yeah there's a whole thing with a lot of our news media are so worried about being perceived as not fair right that they give they don't want to just outright say like right hey this is horribly racist like these people are racist and our president's racist and yeah they don't want to say those things because they're so worried that then people will say like you're not telling both sides you're supposed to be objective you know things like that so yeah yeah and that's not spike lee's job he's a filmmaker and he's telling a story but he's got an opinion or it's not even an opinion this is fact and he's showing it and he's hammering it home and it's obvious and i'm down with it yeah i really like it and what that's that's the thing that i really want to highlight with spike is he's got this reputation of being this real um caustic uh blunt political filmmaker and he all of that is true but he also has this real ability to really make some fantastic scenes. Like the middle section of this movie with the investigation is uh, – there's a lot of really funny just character moments yes. and really, really subtle and interesting and no, and surprising uh, storytelling that yeah. is – really enjoyable really fun in a really traditional i don't want to say period piece kind of movie like yeah no i'm so glad you said that because i think there will be a lot of focus on the message of the movie but it's actually this is a really good movie it's it's really entertaining it's a really interesting story right it's it builds tension when it needs to and it relieves that tension with a joke that maybe you weren't right. expecting and everyone in the movie is really good too like right. there's not like a false performance in here i think personally for me this is the the most i've ever liked adam driver i like adam driver i i think he's a good actor and i just think like yeah. this was like a really good performance from him and i like john washington a lot and, yes. And and, and, and and you know, as someone who's been a big fan of Spike Lee, although I would say probably after like when the levees broke the documentary about Katrina and Inside Man, that was like 2006, like he kind of fell off for me. Like he was like a director that yeah. I super loved. I was like, I'm going to see everything that Spike Lee does. And then kind of after that, I would like. It, it, you know i <laughs> yeah no, it, it he, didn't speak to me and that's a director but i do think he is an interesting director who has a lot to say who has a voice who has an opinion like i like those things right and i think that this movie is i think i said at the beginning like accessible like this is a kind of movie that you don't have to be like well studied in film history to appreciate whereas maybe some right. of his other ones you do yeah yeah this is yeah i I think i think that's the way it is is there's a a lot of movies and i think it's actually it's ironic we should say this one of the things i didn't like about 42 the jackie robinson story that came out a couple years ago is that when you think about what is a movie that you would show that hollywood would make about the first black and then 42 is literally yes. that movie beat for beat. Yes. It's sure. 50% too serious about itself. All the black people in it are paragons and, you know, virtuous in every way. A lot of the white people are racist or whatever. And what I mean by that is it's all too dialed up. People, they're not really characters. They're kind of icons. You know what I mean? Yes. And in this movie – there no, there are no icons they really are all characters we 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 see um Stalin, you know Ron Stallingsworth you know he's really smart he's really hip he's really uh eager but he's also new and he doesn't really know the job so he makes mistakes and he's not but he's not kind of 
childish in the way he deals with that. He'll he'll own up to it and he'll try to get better. And um, you know, Adam Driver, he will do the investigation and he'll put his life on the line. But he's also not really like gung ho. Oh, oh, I'm with you to the end of the line. Ron Stallingsworth. That's kind of like I don't know how far I want to go with this because these are people are losers and I don't know how much I want to, you know. So there's there's all these kind of cross currents and motivation and character that really are kind of real and yes. they make it seem like and it's funny you know i think we've talked way back in previous uh episodes about the kind of movie that i really miss is kind of like the working class story of regular working class people trying to do a job and this is that kind of thing yes these are not really kicking in doors you know, super cops. These are not, this is not, you know, a Navy SEAL played by, you know, Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Right. These are cops in a small town that don't make a lot of money, that want to do the right thing, that are caught in a situation. They want to do the right thing. I get That's it. Right. That's right. They, they <laughs> want to, they don't like working with some of their racist brethren, but at the same time, they are all on the same force and they do have to have each other's back so it, it it examines the the way that cop organizations protect the bad cops right even with the good cops so it it, it it's well you know what it is for all of the guff i've been saying about how this movie is not subtle it really does talk about some of those subtle aspects and well, subtle and, love yeah and, well, and, and it talks about like kind of the different, I guess, like I said, I have, I, I'm still processing this movie, but the idea of being undercover and like kind of the different masks we wear, I guess. So, you know, Adam Driver is not just a white cop being undercover in the Klan. He's also Jewish, you know, right. but it wasn't like a big part of his life. And then, um, Ron Stallworth not only is, you know, a black man in a white police force, but he's also dating a woman who, like, heads the black student union. He's not telling her that he's a cop. And right. there's kind of like, so there's like the kind of the mask he wears when he's at work and like the mask he's wearing with her. And, right. you know, there's a lot of, um, of that sort of story going on in this movie too, I think about people yeah. not being their tr their true selves and hiding their true selves to get to a a means to an end. Yeah. Oh, one thing I want last probably last thing I want to say that I just really love and really love. This is what this is what great filmmaking really does. I would not call Black Klansman a great film, but there's a moment in there's a sequence in this that I would say is is really great and that is you know movies are about emotion that's the thing that makes them different from every other art form they don't necessarily tell truth they don't necessarily tell you what actually happened they're not always fantastical but what but the thing movies do better than any other art form i think is to spark emotion in people that's the thing they do that other ones don't anyway there's a there's a sequence in here and i think in the last uh, – almost for as long as I've been alive, but definitely in the last 10 years, you'll hear people say, well, why do – you know, why is it okay for African Americans to have you know, their groups, but white Americans can't have their groups? And there's a million different answers for that that obviously make a lot of sense. But there's a sequence in here where it – where he intercuts a Klan initiation mm -hmm. with – a student meeting where they are talking to a survivor of lynching. Yes. And he's intercutting these things back and forth. And there comes a moment where once, once, you know, where the clan meeting is, you know, shouting, you know, white power and the African American student union is chanting black power. And it's, the, it's kind of, it, it's, it's this same thing where, each room is chanting that chant, but you can completely see clearly in night and day why it means some, one thing for the African-American Student Union right. and why it means one thing for the 
you know, for the Klan and what that means for America. Yes. Why one means something is important, is understandable, even though when we talk about being a totally race balanced or race neutral society, it does seem a little strange that one can, you know, that we accept one being shouted and don't accept the other being shouted. Um, well, it's because one side is repressed clear. and the other one one's is about not. liberation. Yeah. One's about suppression. One's about building self-worth and expanding freedom. One is about crushing self-worth and tamping down freedom. Yeah. Just to be clear, expanding freedom is the black one. Tamping down <laughs> freedom is the plant one. But um, <laughs> We don't I, want anyone to be confused. So crystal clear and yeah i guess that's another you see, know what that's I think, another thing see, where you're arguing you're, you're saying that maybe this movie isn't like a great movie so clear that i don't know it's its own crazy virtue that yeah. i just i really like this i have not liked the spike lee movie for yeah. a long time well it's been um, more than 10 I years really since i liked a spike lee movie lot. and i really like this movie what i love about this movie what I love about his style of filmmaking that when it's put to the right subject and he's really on his game, he does things that nobody else does in film. And it's, uh, it is genuinely thrilling to watch. So yes. I, I really, I really liked it. I think this movie is a great movie. And I think that there's a lot going on here that on repeated viewings, you would, that people would pick up on different things that are going on here. And I just want to kind of jump, like mention this like random thing that I thought while I was watching the movie, there's a character in the movie named Felix. Uh, he's played by a, a Finnish actor named Jaster Pakonen. He's, and uh, he is the one who's, he's kind of clever. Like he's, horrible racist but like he's kind of clever and he's the one who starts to kind of put things together and he's mm -hmm. got his wife and mm. she's kind of this kind of minor character but she's like someday you're gonna need me to do something you know and i'm gonna be here and i just couldn't help but think of how unfortunately white women came out in droves to vote for trump and mm. the idea of like kind of white women's role in what's happening right now kind of popped into my head like i like that he's he's kind of showing it from all sides like it's not just a black man who's an undercover cop trying to do this thing it's uh, there's also there's a lot in here about about jewish people there's a lot in here about white men and white women, and mm -hmm. I like that it's, I don't know, it's telling, like, a whole story. And yeah. I think the stuff with Alec Baldwin at the beginning and the footage at the end, like, I think we needed it. And like you said, I think, you know, he's not subtle, but I think it's, we should all stop being polite, and it's, you know, time for shit to get real and for people to point out what's going on it's definitely i think the best movie he's made in years it's like i said before i think it's the most success uh accessible probably since yeah. like what inside man right right which now that i think about it i have never actually seen inside man oh inside man's so really good that's what i <laughs> you hear. should see it i know that, that's what you know, i hear and, I, and yeah uh i'm actually a big fan of you know, I don't want us to go on much longer, but I'm actually a really big fan of Spike Lee's documentaries. You know, I like When the Levees Broke. I like Four Little Girls. Um, he actually did a comedy film. He directed the original Kings of Comedy, which I really like, too. Um, I have a feeling like he could make a really amazing documentary about what happens in Char what happened in Charlottesville. Uh, and I would totally see it. Cause... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I just, I, you know, I don't I don't know if we have a lot of directors like Sp Spike Lee that have I don't know, a vision, a voice. I'm glad I I'm, I'm just I was glad to see this movie. I think it's really awesome and I'm going to recommend it to a lot of people. Yeah. You know what? I I I think I I think I will go with you there and I think 
that is a blind spot that I had when we have had this discussion about movies are for big spectacle stuff, t- 10 episode Netflix series are for dramas. Yeah, I and because I hadn't seen a lot of Spike Lee movies lately and because he seemed to have kind of gotten a lot more hit and miss in terms of what he was delivering, I kind of forgot that there that this place for interesting activist style movies that are not purely activist but also have a foot strongly planted in the uh, just enjoyable filmmaking camp yes. or accessible filmmaking camp. Um, you know, I guess he's he's the best kind of straddler, and I don't know in this new media landscape of superhero movies and Netflix seasons where he would come down on that. I know that he did uh, – some series based on uh, she's, she's got to have, have it, it which I, I watched, which I, I really like. How? What? Okay, I yeah, liked it. I don't. Uh, okay, I think it might be. You know, that is funny because now that I'm thinking about it, I don't know if this would be better as a ten episode Netflix series. I think it would get a little too leaden, a little Heel too, too re- repetitive, a little, a little. Yeah, it might get too serious when it didn't need to be. Not that it's not serious, but I like that it. Right builds that tension and lightens it with a joke yeah so that's that so, so that's that so next week you are gonna have margo yes have you already recorded this episode no or is this are you telling anybody okay all We're, right margo's gonna be on I next am... week and we are gonna talk about pretty and pink it's gonna be then, awesome in two weeks unless you have other plans sonia mansfield i would love to come back to the show to talk about the happy time murders oh <gasps> i would love to do that Let's oh my do- god that was yes i'm excited we should, we should maybe do a muppet movie happy time murders oh <gasps> that's no, a but- great idea oh i'm excited uh, so but yeah let's see if we can get somebody um but but let's not talk about all the behind the scenes mechanics uh of the show on the show okay um smith can you tell people where they can find you you can find me on the web at jet jurgens on twitter but to be honest i don't tweet that much um but i am hoping i'm well yeah we'll see yeah <laughs> i will be back to this actually you know what find and you me can on find show. the dorking out show at dorking out yeah. you can find us on twitter at dorking out show we're on Facebook. You can find me at The Sonia Show. I tweet a lot. Um, and this was super fun. I'm so glad you came came back to talk about it. Yes, I am glad I came back. I'm looking forward to being in and out and back and forth and talking to you in the future. And it'll be interesting to see where this all goes. Yes. Do you have anything else you want to say? Otto, if you're listening. No, you know what? I don't I don't have anything. I got nothing I want to say to that guy. <laughs> I got your number. I was right the whole time. You should apologize to Spike Lee. You know who you should. But uh yeah. So Do you have anything else? No, that's it. I just I I, I figured I would give the shit one last turn of the of the spoon to stir it a little bit more and then I'm out. And I'll just say goodbye.